Um, and there's a really sort of interesting link here between new museology and eco-museums because at the me meeting in Santiago, um, a man called Hugh de Varine, who is a, a French uh, academic who was at the time um, the secretary of ICOM, had been at that meeting uh, in Santiago. And in fact, even before that meeting took place, he developed a new word, a different word, uh, for this idea of, of creating museums which would uh, assist local communities. So a word that, if you like, um, which enabled people or encapsulated the idea of creating museums that would use local heritage, driven by local communities, to aid development. And this word he came up with was eco-museum, eco-musée uh, in French. Um, and he developed it, interestingly, I think, for use by the French Minister for the Environment, who was addressing a meeting of ICOM at uh, Dijon in France in 1971. Um, and that's, you know, for me, it's, it's very clear that, that here Eco Museum then was developed with a very um, political dimension, you know, because it was developed specifically for a very high level politician to use. And if you like a shorthand term for what we see now as a whole range of different ways of working to um, help to support local communities and, and local development agendas. And um, a lot of people didn't like it, you know, when the local newspaper in Dijon said, what on earth is all this about? You know, this word eco-museum, you know, what's that mean? Another pointless new word, in fact, is what they said, which is really quite, quite interesting. Um, but as an environmentalist, it's really fascinating for me to see that the word eco-museum was invented at a time when environmentalism was incredibly hot. So at this, round about the early 1970s, we see organizations like Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth actually beginning to be um, uh, started. Yeah, they, they, they started around about the same time. The environment was very, very high on the agenda. So the eco-prefix was in fact quite a politically astute choice in terms of the word. So I think it's quite interesting. So you've got two Frenchmen, two new words, new museology and eco-museum in a very, I've said the same meaning here, but certainly similar meanings. So ever since really the terms new museology and eco-museology are applied to community heritage project concerned with social and economic development. Hugh de Verine sort of used this word because he'd already, you know, even before Santiago, he'd been working with a man called Georges-Henri Riviere, who's a, an, another French museologist, um, to ec do ec all kinds of experimental work in France, working with local communities, and again looking at um, rural areas in France which were a little bit disadvantaged, and thinking about how can we use heritage um, to um, increase the um, e local economy for people and make their lives rather better. Uh, and also um, to try to sort of interpret some really interesting landscapes. Um, two very different people. Riviere was a, an ethnographer, a, a, an ethnologist, and who was particularly concerned by, by what he saw as the disappearance of French rural material and intangible culture. Okay? Um, you know, he saw the way in which the countryside was changing really dramatically in France with new agricultural techniques, different ways of life. So he was really concerned about that and he thought we needed a, a different model to, to try to conserve it. Hugh de Varine was very much more political um, and he really wanted to democratize museums. He wanted to make them uh, more available for uh, local people. and. Um, he saw museums as having this development agenda. So the sort of two things sort of came together and, uh, and, and developed this really interesting approach, which in a way transferred museums from being something about a building to being a museum as place, museum as a territory, museum as a defined geographical area. Okay, so we're going outside the confines of the museum, rather like that 
um, Reinwart Academy definition of, of, of museology. And beginning to think about museums as being more about place and the people that live there and the, and the culture that uh, is embedded within that region. Really, ever since the word was invented, people have been trying to define what an eco-museum is. Uh, and René Rival, who's a, a French-Canadian uh, museologist, came, came up with this definition which enables us to make a contrast between what we see as an, a museum and what is an eco-museum. So he defined a museum as a building plus collections plus experts plus techniques. Okay? So the traditional Western view of the museum, if you like. And he defined the eco-museum as being a territory, okay, a defined geographic area, plus heritage, all the things that are in it, both um, tangible heritage and intangible heritage. Memory, in other words, it's about the people who've lived there and the memories that they have about a place. Um, since then, it's really quite interesting, I think, in the way that ideas about muse eco-museums have developed. Because originally, they were very much about this geographic dimension and things like that. But over recent years, as experimentation and development of eco-museums has continued, they've become much more involved with development and sustainable development. So there exists in Europe what's called the long network of eco-museums. It's now called Local Worlds. But they defined uh, in 2004 the Eco Museum as a dynamic way, and in fact a, a changing way then, in which communities preserve, interpret, and manage their heritage for sustainable development. An Eco Museum is based on a community agreement. And in 2007, I shortened this even further when I published uh, an article about eco-museums and sustainable development. Uh, and I called it, I said that an eco-museum is a community-driven heritage project that aids sustainable development. So, you know, if you want a concise definition, you know, that's what it is. I think what's really interesting, and I'll show you some examples in a moment, but I've visited eco-museums all over the world and everyone is different. And the nice thing about the philosophy and the practice of eco-museums is that you can select, if you like, from a, a, a menu of choices to create something that fits your own particular situation. And this is why they are all so different. Um, so if we wanted to try to represent the uh, eco-museum graphically, this is one way of doing it. This is, make, this is Rivar again. So this is a representation, if you like, of the traditional museum. This is what they look like, you know, very um, elaborate and, and grand and uh, prestigious buildings. And inside we've got wonderful collections, experts in particular subjects and a range of defined techniques which we've been developing over a period of 400 years or so in, in Europe. Uh, and if you're very lucky, you might be allowed in from time to time. Okay, and you can go in there and receive the perceived wisdom um, of these curators who are telling you the stories that they've devised. 